at all. It is Tuesday. Um, I think this is the first time I've recorded, so welcome to a new weekly vlog. We are just, it's um, the week after Easter, Isaac's off school. If you're wondering why I've got company today. Um, going into my mum's. Um, been trying to open a bank account for Isaac for a while. It, we weren't allowed to until he was 13. Um, you know, like just one of those, like, it's called an express cash account. I'm hoping that the card's contactless, but some tell me it won't be because he's 13. Um, just so that he's got a bank account with a little card, so like pocket money and stuff can go in there. Um, so I started the process online and it said because he was under 16, we had to come into the branch with identification. So I'll be with my mum this afternoon. She gets twitchy when she has to wait any length of time anywhere. And you know what it's like in banks. <coughs> so uh, Darren's going to take Isaac into the bank to finish off the application I started. And hopefully they don't say, oh, well, no, you're not the same parent. That, you know, we shall see. He's got all the ID and all that, you know, proof of address and all that palaver. Um, hopefully there's nothing else. But you see, oh, we need to see a birth certificate. Honestly, nowadays, say opening a bank account, it used to be banks wanted customers. Now, I remember my mum putting me a signatory on one of her accounts um, for the scenario if my dad was like laid up sick and she needed access to something, I would be able to go in and do it. Um, and the chances are I'd never, I, I won't ever need to, but my name's there just in case. Jeez, the credit checked me to put me as a, I'm not a named person on the account, it's not my money, so it's not like they're adding me to the bank account as an owner, just as a, you know, I can count, I can sign, and they had, they credit checked me and all sorts, and asked me all these questions, and it's like, honestly, uh, I can't think of anything else to tell you. We're going to the cinema tomorrow with Daniel and Callum to see Kung Fu Panda 4. I'm not quite sure yet if me and Darren are going to go to the cinema, or just depends how tired I am to be honest because if I'm knackered I'm not walking around town and I'm really tired today and I have yeah, to walk around town. Took her in. There's no point in spending what, 16, 20 quid to see a film on a So other than going into town today, going to the cinema tomorrow, um, I could I see at the minute I could sleep for Britain or Ireland, whoever I choose to represent in the sleeping and I could win easily. I'm so tired, it's really difficult chilling myself out of bed. I'm like, today I'm like, oh, I don't, don't want to get up. Yesterday I was in my bed, till, was it three o'clock? Yeah. Three o'clock, I was in my bed too yesterday because I knew I didn't have to go anywhere or do anything and I thought, right, that's it. <clears throat> and I could have lay longer, I'll be honest. I don't know why I'm so exhausted right now. I can't, well, I'm not sleeping very well at the minute because somebody's having a, a shocking amount of snoring going on. You must have a cold that you're not aware of. I'm trying to get the sofa bed sold because it's useless. I thought, oh, that would be really good if anybody ever stays. And then I folded it out and lay on it. And I'm like, oh my God. Point one, two people will not fit on this. Point two, I've never lain on anything. So you'd be more comfortable lying on the floor. That's how uncomfortable it was. And now I know why it was sold. When we got it, it's like, it's, it's in such, you know, it looks brand new. And it does, it's in really pristine condition. The reason it looks brand new is because the bugger's never been used because it's so flipping uncomfortable, nobody would lie on it. So I want to get a little double bed for that room and get rid of that. Um, <clears throat> so that we have a, what's called a snore room. And then if anyone ever came to stay, there's a bed. So <clears throat> anyway, that's not very exciting, but that's what's happening at the moment. Um, next thing I want to do is get some shelves for the living room for the two alcoves and get rid of. There's a bookcase and a glass cabinet. I want to try and get rid of stuff. I just feel like there's clutter everywhere but when people buy me stuff I like to display it. You know you get stuff for birthdays and Christmases and stuff but I need to start packing some stuff away that doesn't need to be on display all the time and just have specific, you know, so that it actually looks all right rather than, look, there's loads of stuff here and there and there. And the other thing is, pops, I shouldn't have started. I knew if I started, it would get to me. It, it would, I would get carried away, and it has. Darren says, we don't buy any more. And it's like, but then, what if something come out like Muppet's Christmas Carol? You know, like, I couldn't not have them. 
so I'm quite tempted to because I've kept all the boxes I'm quite tempted to sell a load of them but keep you know my favorite little collections like I've got Queen ones I would keep those I would keep Muppets Christmas Carol um, you know this just like up I could buy something Isaac, you have no room for pops. No, you don't. Isaac's bedroom is just literally like somebody's just opened this like Smith's and just chucked half the contents of it in the room. <clears throat> so I might cut down the pops, but then it'll be really hard because I'll be looking at them and going, oh, you know, I want this one. I'll be, you know, I'll maybe get rid of like three, and then it's like, is there any point? Because I can't think of ones like I would like to keep the up ones, the Coco ones, the Queen ones, the Muppets Christmas Carol ones. I'm not particularly bothered ones. about any Star Wars ones. Um, Game of those. Isaac, this child has no room anywhere for anything in his room, and he's going to take you don't have where. Everywhere. No, Isaac. Every surface in your bedroom is covered. Windowsills even covered. Shelves, bookshelves, you name it, everything's covered. Yet there's no room to put another shelf up. There isn't. If there was, Isaac, we would have already put it up. Start a new career as a fussing into the ceiling and start doing it. What, pops? Yeah. No. Yeah, that would Because that would not be cool. Don't start that. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Lord, get ready, get ready. What is that? Oh, it's a little tiny stuffy puppy. And it's that. Kelly and Dave have a cat called Wicked, and it's exactly the same like text. Well, obviously, I didn't touch the dog, but it's that sort of texture. Um, it's like a not that you know what Kelly and Dave's cat looks like, unless you're Kelly or Dave watching this. It's you know that that bluey grey fur that looks so soft, um, and you get some stuffies with it. Well, that was a little stuffy puppy. Wicked is Kelly and Dave's cat, and I don't know what age she is, but she must, you know, she's not a kitten, but she looks like a kitten. She's always looked like a kitten. Tiny little thing. With that blue-grey colour fur that looks just so soft. Is this car coming out or what? She's looking the other way. I don't like, I don't like when people are looking right. She's seen me, right. Hate when people are coming out onto the main road and all you can see is the back of their head. You're thinking, have you seen me? Do you know I'm coming? Right, I'll switch you off. Um, I'll switch you back on later if there's anything of any interest to tell you. If you don't see me later, you'll see me probably tomorrow um, about the cinema. Um, oh God, just to finish this off, I haven't opened my WhatsApp yet. I've had a text from the woman that runs Scouts asking if I want to do admin for Scouts. <laughs> the answer is no. I don't particularly want to do admin for Scouts, but I feel really guilty because they're all given of their, of their time so much time for something that my child's in and I feel that it would be really rude to say well actually no I can't be bothered but it's like it would be like I, I caught she sent two messages and I caught just wondering if you would be interested in ad, admin role as guys was the first one obviously this is voluntary um and the second one was something about liaison with Marcus about payments um basically She's chased again today. What she means is, she wants you to do all the hard graft because all these idiots it's not never reply, never pay on that's time. That's true, that's true. That's it. It's not she wants me to do all the hard graft. She is doing so much hard graft, everything has been left to her to do. Yeah, she enjoys everything apart from chasing the idiots that won't reply. That's the part she doesn't enjoy. Because she says it's a pain in the ass because nobody replies on time. And oh, then they have trips true. waiting to be booked. Yeah. And then people come late and say, can my child go? It's like, well, it's booked now. You were supposed to get in touch last month. Oh, but, but, but. Why would you set a strict? I've already said to the woman, I don't know how you have the patience. Um, because, like, remember when I told you she was chasing about the payment and she thought I hadn't paid? Because they thought I hadn't paid because I paid so long ago compared to everyone else. Mine wasn't showing up for March. I says, oh, well, pay. I looked it up, 19th of February. And she says, I thought that there was been an oversight. I didn't expect that you hadn't paid because the guy that runs the payments came and said that this is a list of people that haven't paid. And she's been like, I very much doubt she hadn't paid. Um, um, that was probably about a week ago, I would say. And then this morning again, the scouts are going on a trip. What is this car doing? You can't park it middle of bloody road. 
Jesus Christ. What a moron. Oh, I'll stop and put my indicator on in the road. Um, Shall I go back and knock on his window? No, he shan't. Anyway, the scouts are going away in 10 days for a weekend to Ballyhorning. And they were supposed, the payment should have been made like February, early March at the latest. She chased last week saying, look, this needs to be paid. And she's chasing again this morning because some people haven't paid. So I think that's part of what she wants me to do. I haven't opened my WhatsApp yet because I haven't decided what I'm going to say. Um, I don't really want to do it, but I, I feel bad about saying no. So I need to mull it over this afternoon and then decide. Um, right, I shall speak to you guys probably either later or tomorrow. Tuesday, Costa. I've had to take out a mortgage. Again, you have. Salted caramel frappe. Chocolate brownie. Large hot chocolate with cream and flake and marshmallows and a chocolate brownie. Latte, hot chocolate. These two didn't take a bun because there's no blondies and Darren didn't want one because they can't eat buns. Right, I'm gonna switch you off now and enjoy my frappe. Hello, so it is Wednesday. I'm just recording this um, while I have got the laptop out. Um, I am recording a review for a movie that I watched for Leo for Geek Legion of Doom. Um, so I'll catch you up. There's nothing really happening. Darren's gone into town with Isaac, Daniel and Ruben. No, nope, Daniel and Callum to see Kung Fu Panda 4. Don't think he's going. He's gone for a walk around town. Um, and then they're going back to Daniel's house. Um, I was so exhausted. I could not trail myself out of bed to go. But Darren is snoring so badly at the minute. It's not even funny. And then when he got up, he spent the morning shouting, so I couldn't get any sleep. I was like, oh God. So I am just cream crackered. Um, I have, I don't know if I mentioned, I've been asked by the lady that runs Scouts to help with the admin, like chasing payments for trips and getting permission forms and keeping all the records and stuff. And I didn't really like to say no, um, because they, she does so much you know, it's all voluntary for the Scouts and Isaac's in Scouts. And I'm like, oh. so I've got myself lumbered with this now. Um, so I had to sit like this course, a data protection course. So I've got certification in that now. And I've got certification in something about young people that I did before. And I've had the Northern Ireland disclosure form. That's where <clears throat> they look into your record to make sure that you're allowed to work with children and that you don't have any convictions. So I've got all that now. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to have to chase up loads of people for payments, see people not paying for things. It's, I can't even, she sent me the spreadsheets and the amount of people on there that haven't paid is ridiculous. Um, so it's up to me to chase all these people now, so that'll be great. So if I didn't think I had 101 WhatsApp groups before, because you can't, she said she doesn't encourage on the main group scouts WhatsApp saying, right, I am waiting for forms from these people and listing names. She doesn't like to do that. Personally, I'd be doing that. She said she individually messages them all. So that's like, if you're waiting on 10 forms, you're starting 10 new conversations with 10 separate parents instead of just putting on the main group. Right, these 10 people's parents, get your forms back. I don't know. So anyway, I was about to start recording Leo's video and a full, Full glass of Pepsi. You know my big glass that I usually drink out of as a pint glass? All round the bloody corner. All round my books. All round the plug. Absolute fucking nightmare. So I've managed to clean it all up now and my afternoon's nearly gone because I've had to just take this whole corner apart. All my books. Clean all the electrics. Darren had been in. He'd been livid. He hates anything. Like we'd been spilt and there were no electrics. Like, like you do it on purpose, you know. So thankfully that's all cleaned up. He's not going to say that. <laughs> He should be back actually within, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm going to go and edit this video, get it across to Leo, and then I'm going to look at these spreadsheets um, for Scouts and see what the crack is with that. I shall, I think Thursday, Friday, I don't think, I'm, I'm just so tired. I don't think I'm doing much of anything. Nothing's planned for the weekend as yet. Um, so yeah, I shall catch up with you guys when I have anything else of interest to tell you. Speak to you later. 
not what you want to see on your TV or whatever. Massive. Saturday morning. Too fucking early. I'm just going to keep quiet a minute to hear what I can hear. Not as loud at the minute as it's been getting. Storm Kathleen, that's my mum's name. I have not slept a wink most of the night because of the fucking noise. Our house backs on to like a mountain, so there's nothing behind it. Not a mountain, a big hill. Um, so the wind hits our house straight on. And we've got these really irritating vents. Which mean that all you can hear is wind whoosh, all night. And then it quiets down and you think, oh. And then it starts again. So I have not been sleeping. I'm just doing my fucking head in. Had to give up on sleep eventually. That's our letterbox rattling with the wind. You can see the trees. So fucking windy. Honestly, look at the mess of the garden. My flower beds. That I need to sort out. Windy, 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 windy miller. That's that fucking vent. Let's see this. Saturday evening. Watching Ant and Dec. I switched it on to show you our LED lights that are behind. You probably can't tell. There's LED lights behind the TV. I got them. Right, switch off so I can watch this. I like about Ant and Dec on Saturday night. Storm Kathleen got our fence. Look. No, there's no commentary on this. I'm going to turn you around actually so you can see what's at the end of our driveway now. Right, I'm aware you've got a little bit of the dash on the side but that's as good as I can do. <clears throat> I've turned you around because at the end of the drive where they're building the houses, first of all we were told 15, then Durham was told 33 and then someone else said it's 47 so I think I know where she's getting that 47 from. The Look, so we can't see any more of what's going on. Right, yes, I'm a state. I know I always say to you, just some days I can't be bothered, and today's one of those days. And I'll tell you what, every time I can't be bothered, someone turns up right around. Last week, on Sunday, I thought, oh God, I can't be bothered. And went into my mum's, and my aunt, and my uncle, and my cousin turned up, and me looking like a state. Um, there's that big dog out again. It's that old session that you saw. Remember I put in the wee clip from the, from the, um, you won't see him. Yeah, so I keep getting a sore eye. Um, so I have been sort of on and off with contact lenses for a few days, which is why I sort of haven't been putting makeup around my eyes either. Um, anyway, we're at Sunday. I put it on to close the vlog off and to tell you that we are in the midst of Storm Kathleen which is my mum's name. Um, there's this guy that everybody else will know who he is, but just in case you don't, I'll tell, I'll give you his name. He's called, I think his, his TikTok is called Garin underscore music, or if you just look up Garin Irish, you'll find him. He's, he does, um, 
just really short funny TikToks and he's got a YouTube channel. Sometimes he pops up on Facebook and I find him really amusing. He was outside today, obviously he's Irish and he said we've got the Irish have, well I'll not tell you exactly what he said because he's quite sweary. The Irish have got two storms at the minute. Storm, I think Olivia's the other one. Olivia and Kathleen, he says we're in a, what did he say, a struple. We're in a struple. Do you get it? Um, he says we've two women on the go at once, Kathleen and Olivia. So um, it's, it's, it's rather funny. So Garon, G-A-R-R-O-N, music. So he must do music, I've no idea. Um, he's a big fat lad with, um, says me, he's a big fat lad with a beard and long hair. Um, it looks a bit like him from Game of Thrones, that sort of, it doesn't look like him from Game of Thrones, but what was his name from Game of Thrones, huh? Um, the one that everyone liked. No. Anyway, that, that was just, that was absolutely no good information. It was a monk. It, it was a monk and he got with one of the wildlings and they had a baby, I think. Was it? It's not Jon Snow, baby. is it? Do you think Garen looks like Jon Snow? Jesus. It's a really good day, love, to go walk and alongside a road when it's we're getting blown all over the place. Anyway, as I was filming very briefly, or part of our garden fence has come down, which is a problem for several reasons. Don't let the dogs out. But the main reason is, it's right beside our oil tank. I'm worried the one beside it is now gonna come down because it's not anchored to anything. And uh, if it hits the oil tank, it could, obviously it's, it's a plastic tank, it could break will lose oil. The other thing is well, there's a lot of thieves which I wouldn't have thought to be honest because nobody's ever broken into anything of ours but the building guys that are at the end of the way said to Darren, what did they nick? On the very first night we drained up JCB's at easy. The very first night that all of the equipment was left there, somebody snuck in and drained the diesel out of all of the equipment. I mean really? Very good mind on who it is that did it as well. Um, them yeehaws from the, the, that basically live next door to it. Um, maybe they didn't, maybe I'm just being horrible, but um, Jesus, it's even blown that over. There's you know those signs outside petrol stations and the bases are concrete, it's blown one of them over. It's doesn't it? I'm driving along, you're thinking, well, it doesn't seem that bad now. It's, it's been really bad for two days, all day yesterday. All night on Friday night, all night last night, into today, and it's still blowing a gale. Um, we stayed in all day yesterday. There's, I actually filmed, you'll have heard it, I filmed some of what I was listening to in the bedroom. It was shocking. Could I sleep? No, not a bit. And then I woke up this morning because I needed to go for a wee, and then I couldn't get back to sleep again. So I ended up listening to stories on Amazon Music. <coughs> Uh, what else I want to tell you? We watched Lamb last night. Um, it's a film with Liam Neeson. It's his first main role. It was 1985. I've been after it for years. Purely because we studied it for, I don't know if it was GCSE. It was around that time in English literature. It was one where I told you, like, Liam Neeson does something in the film. Um, and our project was, half of us had to be prosecution for what he did and half of us had to be defence. I was defence um, and then we had to do like a courtroom thing which I went to the sick bay and got out of because I was that sick to the stomach at the thought of doing it. Um, I had a real issue with talking in front of people. Um, anyway I haven't seen it since I was like 15ish, round about that age. Um, and it's really expensive to buy but somebody was selling it on eBay for I think it was like six or seven quid, I can't remember, something like that and I'm like oh so I bought it and we watched it last night. It's all right. Um, I think it could have done with a little bit of extra background to make you connect a little bit more with it, but it was pretty much how I remembered it. It was a lot more bad language in it than I remember. Half an hour longer, a bit more great, and get rid of that theme music. Yeah, oh, Van Morrison did the theme for it and it was, it was all saxophony and it was awful. It was so dating. 
you know, it, it really made you feel like you're watching a much older film. I don't remember there being so much swearing in it, especially given we studied it in school. Yeah, there were a pair of boobies in it too, briefly. Um, but the thing is, we must have been shown that movie in school because I didn't see it at home. Sure, I didn't. Where would I have seen that? Um, but the wee boy in it is the basic premise is Liam Neeson is a priest in a boy's home. There's nothing, don't worry, there's no horrible things what they usually say about priests and boys' home. And this little boy comes in, he's very badly treated by his family, his mum drops him off, he has epilepsy, he's not he's not a very well little boy and he's picked on blah blah blah. And the film is basically based around him and Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson sort of has a a fatherly sort of feel towards him um, and wants to protect him from everything and that's what the, the wee boy's a bit rough around the edges so he swears a lot he smokes and he's like what well, he looks about eight but i think he's 13. ten and three quarters oh ten and three quarters um he looks really he's really little and really scrawny compared to all the other boys i think on purpose to make you feel sorrier for him the book which we studied in school goes into a lot more detail about him, his background. How, you see, this is why I maybe thought there was more to it, because obviously I remember the book. You know, there was more about his experiences in the boys' home and how horrible it was. Things he went through, um, which they didn't go into in the film. <coughs> but, um, yeah. So I brought it in. I don't, I don't remember there being babies in the book, but it was only 15. I don't remember. So I brought it in for my mum to watch it, she'll enjoy that. So apart from maybe the movie's bit. Fast um, forward that bit. Fast forward that bit, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what's happening right now. Um, Isaac's back to school, unfortunately, tomorrow. So Isaac's back to school. I've got a dentist appointment on Tuesday, which I am waiting on getting a text on Monday to say your appointment's been cancelled because it's that NHS dentist. <coughs> And Darren and Isaac's appointments were both cancelled, and my last one was cancelled. Is it the aggressive guy? I think he's moved to. I oh, hope it's not. Uh, he's moved to Balamoni, unless he's back. So I've got the dentist on Tuesday. Isaac's got the orthodontist on Tuesday to tighten his brace again. Um, What's going on? Tighten again? Isaac, you were told when it was put on less than a year ago it would be about 18 months. You got it last, I think, was it just after? Just before the holiday. Yeah, it so was. It around about June, July. It was the summer holidays last year, Isaac, you got it. So I would say around June sometime is roughly when you got it. So it's only coming up to, you've only had it about 10 months now. So when did you get that? I don't know. He said 18 months, didn't he? So December? It could probably be the end of the year. <clears throat> well, it's one of them things, Isaac, you're lucky you've got your teeth straightened. You could have to walk about with crooked teeth your whole life. <clears throat> right, I'm almost at my mum's. Oh, the sun is shining and it's 12 degrees, which for this time of year is quite warm. I suppose it's actually getting on to nearly, it's not quite warm now. I'm still thinking we're in winter, but not. Yeah, I know, just, this is what I always do, I guess this is, this is a problem. Right, we're at my mum's, and I've talked all the way, I don't think I've filmed much this week, so I'll make up for that. Um, oh, I never told you, you know, my mum's meant to be getting new carer starting tomorrow, which really shocks me, it switched over to a different carer company, but the name of the carer company it switched to is what my mum's carers were originally called before it was taken over by another company, so... I'm not 100% sure what's happening, but her new care company starts tomorrow, so we shall see. Um, thank you for watching. I shall be back next week. Um, over and out from Kit and Poodle.